19 years ago, God spoke to the heart of his humble servant, James T. Elam Jr., and told him he would pastor a ministry where Jesus was the boss, a theocracy, not a democracy, a church where Christ would be the center and the dunamis power of God would cause people's lives to change and rearrange for the good. Thus, the vision was birthed into our pastor's spirit to teach and preach the word of God with demonstration of the spirit and dunamis power, making a difference in the lives of people, ultimately changing them to become anointed like Christ. The vision was so strong that Pastor Elam began preaching to the congregation, which consisted of only furniture in his home. It did not take long for the anointing to begin drawing those called to dunamis. The ministry began in the eighth month with eight members. God and all of his intentionality and purpose was showing you something even then, Pastor. The number eight holds great significance in the Bible. The historic Christian church has traditionally associated the number eight with the entrance into the covenant of God, a time of new beginnings. Starting ministry in the eighth month with eight members was no surprise to God. He was establishing a covenant with you, Pastor, as you stepped out on faith and a word of God to begin this ministry. Now, as we enter into the 19th year of ministry of the supernatural, we understand the necessity of the message of love you have taught us, and more importantly, unity. If we are to walk in the supernatural, we must first be like him in our love walk, and we must be on one accord. The word of God reminds us that where there is unity, God commands the blessing. We have witnessed firsthand 19 years of the supernatural. God's hand of love has been upon this ministry from day one, and for that, we give him thanks. And so you can't get this, they, see they got this microwave Jesus, this, you can, you know, just throw him in there and put him on three minutes and get your prayers answered. No, 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 they ain't the Jesus we serve. That's why you need, see, the church needs spiritual parents. Because when people, pass, when people get born again, they are children. And they need parents so the parents can teach them how to talk. So when you come to the church, your parents, the Elams, they teach you how to talk. And he's just so good, you just want to give back to him because he blessed you. He won every battle for you. He woke you up. He got activity of your limb. He gave you in your right mind. I got to give to God. I got to give back and show him my appreciation and love for waking me up and protecting my family. I can't do that by myself. I'm tired of working and staying up all night worrying about my kids. I'm going to give it to God. And my faith is I when I tithe and when I give, I'm letting you know I trust you, Jesus. I'd rather lose it all as long as I got King Jesus. Everything gonna be all right. Cause if everything go, if I got him, he'll build it back up again. He'll heal me again. He'll deliver me again. Gave her another report and said she no longer has HIV. I'm like, wow. HIV and a headache is no different from God. Oh Lord. This is the doctor report that she no longer has. Oh Lord. When the doctor look in your face and give you a death report, she had a death report. But Jesus showed up and gave her a good report. Somebody got some cigarettes in their pocket right here and you trying to get free. As soon as you put it in my hand, you'll never smoke another day in your life. I um, came up on Sunday. Came up and said, I'm not going to smoke. I said, he said, if you just put it in your hand, do what you got to do. Yeah. I didn't have cigarettes in there on me at that time. I was hiding in the car. So, he came up. I said, and this is before he put his hands on me. I said, I need this pastor. Put his hands on me. I'm going to smoke the drops. I saw this man get out his car. Y'all know he's so smooth with his walk. When he walking towards you. In the name of Jesus. He was walking toward me. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, God has sent somebody to pray with me. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. I shouted when he was coming near me. I shouted, I shouted. I gave the praise before. We rode the elevator up. 
I never once told them what side was paralyzed. He walked to the right side of the bed. He began to pray. He touched from the book of Acts the cloth on my husband's neck. He prayed for Nick White. Let me just tell y'all, the next day, my husband opened his eyes. In the mighty name of Jesus. You're here with this awesome man of God. He has an awesome testimony about how Pastor Elam and this ministry has blessed him. What's your name, sir? My name is Paul Reginald Willis. I'm from Virginia Beach. And if it had not been for your pastor ministry, I spent 15 months in the city jail of Chesapeake. And every Sunday we watched him. If it had not been for him, I wouldn't have made it. His ministry, his wife ministering to the men in Chesapeake jail, if you go there on a Sunday morning and turn that TV, you got to fight on your hand. That's how God is blessing in that jail through this ministry. Beautiful. Guess what? Anniversary. Say this to the devil. We ain't playing with you. Go to church. about to do a dance and I can't tell you what it is first but I just give you a clue we're doing it it says go wild in it so we go wild for everything else but God so can y'all all say go okay can you go out go out go out go out go out Pastor James T. Elam Jr. Welcome to the table spread of the Lord. Sometimes you can sow your seed as a farmer and not receive a good harvest. Jesus said, so is the kingdom of God. You have to sow the word of God on good ground. The kingdom of God is sow the seed, then everything start working down there underneath and then not knowing how, he don't know how he got saved, but he came to church, he changed it, he treated you better, and yet you said nothing. All you did was sow the word and stop complaining so much. God, if you were listening to him, he would tell you 
It is not me. I already gave it to you. You just don't have no seed in the soul. Body of Christ, Jesus is soon to come. The scripture says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. He will come when you least expect it. He could come today. He could come tomorrow. He could come anytime. We must be ready. God sent me a rose. That's why I'm here at the Huntington Park Rose Garden because God sent me a rose 27 years ago. We've been married. My first lady, Penny, her first name is Rose. Roses are special and they're beautiful and they're awesome and they're so needed. The reason why I've been a good father is because I've had a great mother with me, my wife and lover and friend. And today I want to um, say something to you, um, Miss Penny. And I just begin to think about how supportive you are. And in everything I've ever done, you've been there for me. When I started the ministry, you was there. You supported me then. You was always giving up yourself to to be the first lady, and many people don't know all the things that go behind the scene of being the first lady, but you sacrifice your family. I want to thank you. I am where I am today because of you. Thank you so much. I remember I was kind of hesitant about starting the ministry, and I and this guy, this prophet, came to my dad's church and prophesied and in front of the whole church and said, I shouldn't go start Dunamis. And I was kind of like, I knew God put something else in my spirit. And I asked you when I got home, I said, what do you think about what that um, prophet had said? And you said, I believe, I don't know what he's living, but I know where you're living. And I trust the God in you. And that word kind of like launched out where we are today. Thank you for supporting me. You are special to me. And I tell you, your, your friendship, your love, your support, um, has been just awesome. Just want to take time and say today that um, I love you. In the body of Christ, sometimes it has, it has been taught and told to us that, you know, being romantic is not right in the eyesight of God, but that's not true. 
God wants us to be romantic. Who would only dream of me? get back up in a minute, but I, I, I got to talk about Luther for a minute. <laughs> he broke that thing down. That was so romantic. But what was hilarious is you just can't take some church folks nowhere. <laughs> he done turned the place into a nightclub, y'all. It's straight Luther. And then Sister E, she gonna go with Shirley Caesar. If I do it all over again, I would do it with you. Yeah, I mean, I don't have to put on. So I'm just happy. I, we need this, excuse me y'all, we need this moment for me. <laughs> and I'm gonna finish with this. It's so amazing to be in love and I follow you to the moon in the sky above she got my butt she got my butt man I didn't know you could sing like that he's the only one he's the only one who really loved me I found out you're the only one who really cared for me. Yeah. He's the son of man who rose up on the third day. Yes, he. We have shifted and the time has come for us, DCC, to buckle down and give support to not just the vision, but the mission this ministry has been entrusted with, to release the power of dunamis while preaching the gospel of grace. We are excited about the direction we are going in ministry as we continue to follow the leading and guidance the Holy Spirit has given our man of God. This is only the beginning of what God has for this ministry and everyone connected to it. On today, Pastor, First Lady, we say happy anniversary. We love you, we appreciate the gifts you are to us, and we are ready to go where no man has ever gone before. Happy anniversary. <laughs>